I'd like to call this evening's uh, Hanover Borough Council meeting to order. Uh, please. What is that noise? Just roll with it. Okay. Roll. Please stand, remove your hats, and join me to give a Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands. stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> I, yeah. An executive sure. session was held uh, prior to this meeting from 6 o'clock p.m. to 6.52. Uh, to meet with council and the solicitor regarding a conditional use request for Buck Stuckey at 223 Carlisle Street uh, under Section 708A5 of the Sunshine Act, and also to discuss a matter involving a prospective borough employee under Section 708A1. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, before we have our public comment, uh, we'd ask that everyone that's intending to make uh, a comment this evening in the public comment section to have uh, signed in with the register at the door where you put your name and address and so forth on the, uh, on the list. Um, we're also requesting that all citizens wishing to speak, please sign in, as I mentioned, at the agenda table at the meeting, at the beginning of all the meetings. Please be able to summarize your concern, question, or comment, and structure it to within about three minutes to allow adequate time and consideration for all comments to be heard from our meeting participants. With that, uh, I will we're gonna get the sheet. I will ask for public comment for those uh, that are here in the room, after which we will go to the our digital participants. Good, e good evening. Art Becker, 529 Carlisle Street, Hanover. Again, as you know, I represent numerous property owners in the borough, both landlords and tenants. We're back here tonight to discuss the structure of the landlord-tenant workshop. This is listed under item 9B on the agenda as the rental registration and inspection workshop. My first question that I think we should all be asking ourselves tonight is why are we here? Why do we keep coming back uh, and, and revisiting this issue again and again? You might recall that on November 22, 2022, Councilman Hegberg made a motion to adopt the rental unit registration inspection ordinance. No one else would second the motion. The silence was deafening. What does that mean? It means that council doesn't want this ordinance. The people who live in the borough of Hanover don't want this ordinance. But here we are two months later talking about a workshop to promote this ordinance. Why is that? How can one council person keep putting this issue back on the agenda again and again and bringing it back meeting after meeting when the entire community and council are being held hostage over this ordinance. What are we even talking about? I was here for the last several meetings. I'm not even sure. Councilperson Funk raised an important issue. She said her biggest concern was the number of buildings in the Hanover Borough that are looking run down. I think many of those in attendance agreed, and, and we all agreed that many of them are occupied by tenants. That is a problem. But it's not a problem that can be fixed by a big, more government or the IPMC. Council President Ricard promised to have a public discussion about people's concerns, about potential solutions. And here we are two months later talking about a, a workshop that's not going to be public. And it will not include Mr. Chris Miller, the borough code enforcement officer. I think Mr. Miller is doing an excellent job. But the council person that's promoting this workshop apparently doesn't agree. Ironically, the only person who can really resolve this disagreement is Mr. Miller himself, but he will not be invited to this workshop. Does that make any sense to anyone? 
The meeting also is not going to be public, as promised. You'll have to be invited to participate. Who will be invited? We don't know. And to top it all off, I now saw on the agenda, under Councilperson Rupp's uh, uh, committee, that they want to put a three-minute time limit on the amount of time that anyone could speak. They want to buy a timing system. So they can make sure that whoever does get invited to this closed meeting doesn't speak for more than three minutes. I couldn't even have a conversation with Councilperson Funk in November to find out what her concerns were in three minutes. When I was here in November, we had a packed house. There was every seat in the room just about was filled. I heard President Ricard compliment people for taking time out of their schedules, for being here to attend the meeting. And I believe that what borough residents want is not to be silenced. They want to be heard. Councilperson Ricard never had to ask anyone to sit down because they were disrespectful. He never had to cut anyone off on a three-minute arbitrary, three-minute time limit. He never told anyone they were disrespectful. I never heard any council members say that. Silencing your critics or people that don't agree with you is not the answer. We need an open dialogue between council and the public that is respectful, spirited, informed, not secret meetings or three-minute time limits. That's not what Council Recart promised us. And what about the individuals who are invited to participate in the meeting? Could you, could you please? Are they going to be allowed to talk about the solutions that we talked about in November? Uh, about the possibility of a borough buying a building and tearing it down, selling it to a developer to build a new house like you did on Baltimore Street, uh, tax cuts for landlords that make improvements to their properties so their taxes don't go back up? Or will they be limited to discussing the ordinance that no one voted for except Councilman Hegberg? Can anyone even define the problem that the workshop is attempting to solve, or is that a secret too? I think this has gone too far. The workshop is no longer a public meeting to discuss solutions. It's an attempt to revive an ordinance that council and the people don't want. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other uh, public comment? Uh, Mr. Riston. Sorry, I don't have a binder this time. I just have the uh, 31 committee, meeting, committee meetings that we've had on this topic over the last four years. Um, before I begin my public comment, I do want to correct the record real quick. Um, back in November, in the minutes and mentions that I talked about Glenville Borough, when it was really Glen Rock Borough. They've had a rental inspection for the last 20 years and has updated about in 2017 in October. So that's the community I was talking about when they're dealing with this situation. Because, you know, Glen Rock has a large population of their community is renter based as well. So more of an app comparison. Um, back in November, Councilman Reichert asked me what I wanted from an ordinance. And for me, looking over the 31 committee meetings that we've had, on rental inspection and rental registration. It came very apparent that a lot of committee members, council members are actually in support of it. But unfortunately, with the lack of showing from the public, it doesn't seem that way and can kind of seem lopsided. So I have started to ask people to come to meetings. So if anyone is here at this meeting today that's in favor of rental inspection or rental registration ordinance, I'd ask them to stand up so council can see them, so they can be seen. And the reason I'm doing this is because you need to know that people are in your court, that people want this done in our community. And I, I want to go on to say that in, we already had a full committee meeting in, for the public safety back in January 13th, 2020, that was fully focused on this topic, open to the public, open to comments, had an entire presentation by our fire chief on this, right? And it was a great meeting, right? And council member when Funk was also on there as well, being able to talk to the public. Additionally, um, as noted in the email <coughs> uh, for a rental inspection on November 9th, 2021, the current ordinance itself fails for three reasons, right? No mechanism for verifying for a trigger of the data, for having a program that lacks structure, that simply collects data that is often not reliable, and three, because of the administrational rate, uh, it currently doesn't have a consistent history of citing property owners for failure to comply. So for those reasons, right, that was the task 
to update our ordinance because the current one is lacking. And when council was presented options multiple times, may I have you, council decided to go <coughs> with the strongest option for safety reasons. And safety is important. I want to note back to November, or rather, rather February 5th, 2020, when the York fire from 24th to 32nd on York Street, Fire Chief Clouser stated that the cause of the fire could have easily been identified in a routine fire inspection. Further, in 2018 and 2019, we had over 90% of fire losses happening in rental properties. I want to re reiterate why this is important, how you have the power as council, as determined <coughs> under Section 3205-A in Reserve Powers. You have the ability to have inspectors go into houses is protected by the state. The one thing you need, you need to caution about is the fee. The fee under the Commonwealth when Allentown was sued over their fee increase matters how that's determined. Thankfully, this ordinance doesn't state a fee. That can happen at a later date, which I imagine council will do. <coughs> Furthermore, I don't believe a workshop is necessary because of how many meetings we've had and how great this ordinance is. If this ordinance was not great, you would hear it from me first as a renter firsthand. I would not sugarcoat that. I would tell you this ordinance is bad and we need to move on and have more meetings. But this one is a really well done one. It only looks at making sure that property managers live in York. It only looks at making sure that rental registration is done but kept up with every two years. Finally, though, if you want to go with a workshop that is your prerogative, I ask you to have a deliverable by the summer so that you can vote either yes or no on it to make sure that if a compromise can be made by renters and landlords, that the prior ordinance that's been worked on for the last two years is the base ground that that will be voted on if a compromise cannot be structured. I have full faith that you as council members and my council member Funk, who has strongly talked about this in favor for the last three years, will get this done. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Riston. Of course. Um, I have two other names here. Mr. Taylor, please come forward. Mark Taylor, uh, 168 Second Avenue. <clears throat> um, speaking of the February 5th, 2020 fire, hi, I was one of the people who lost his property and everything within that during that fire. Not to mention, two days less than a year, February 3rd, 2021, I lived at two, two, I lived at, sorry, I'm not very good at public speaking. I lived at, I lived at 217 York Street. Once again, the building right behind me caught on fire, which could have been by preventable means. The only reason I was spared that time is because there was a brick wall because of the way the building was built over time. I still had massive smoke damage I had to do from. So within one year, two properties here that I lived in, rented, had fires. Both were very easily preventable if somebody had just inspected these properties. The first one, the wire was hanging between the buildings at some point uh, where I've heard construction was done. They knocked the wire, never repaired it. The second one was uh, faulty wiring in the flooring between the two units. Um, so I really think that, yeah, we just need to inspect these places. There's so many places in this town that I've lived that have been death traps. I'm not even going to lie about it. I've lived at quite a few places, uh, lived over by, I can't remember the address, but on Broadway, over by the Crab Shack, I lived in those rental units at one point. I've lived, um, I can't remember all the places, but every place I've lived that's been affordable for anybody has been not very well kept by their landlords. And I think just somebody needs to come and inspect them every once in a while. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, the last I have is, um, last name is Klein. I'm sorry. The public comment, thank you. All right. Um, then I guess we'll go to our uh, digital participants. We got okay. Those joining us online, you can unmute yourself if you'd like to address council. then um, with that we'll close the public comment for this section of the meeting 
and um, there's no other anything that I've missed. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Oh, you know what did we do? I uh, roll call. We'll do roll call. Oh, good. Okay, so we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, items three A through H. May I have a motion? Uh, motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Second. Are there any items anyone would like to pull out and discuss specifically? Um, yeah, uh, D, please, on the approved appointment of John Tracy. Uh, what I need to know is, um, on approving this, um, what is the um, monetary outcome to hiring this person? What, what is the total amount? Do you have that? Hi, darling. Thank you. Um, this is a position that Borough Council approved filling as Assistant Borough uh, right. Treasurer uh, back uh, quite a few months ago when our former Assistant Borough right. Treasurer left in July. Um, so John Tracy did accept the, the position and started in January. Um, he was hired in the range uh, that was approved at that time. I can't tell you the exact number off the top of my head, but it was council approved the range for the position right. and he was right. hired within that range. Well, I can remember the range and then it was also uh, brought out that there were, you know, there was insurance, et cetera. So that wasn't tied to uh, the salary, and that's why I'm saying I just needed to have a. F I can get you those. Can you I can get, get that you those. for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can get that's that all I need. But okay, he was hired within the range yeah. that was approved I know by that, council, and I know we so. discussed it thoroughly. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. That concludes um, those in favor of passing the consent agenda. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries takes us to item four, Main Street Hanover. Justine, welcome back. Hi, thank you, good evening. I know community media has a presentation for us. Um, oh, and I'm realizing my annual reports are in the car, so I will bring those after I'm done with my presentation here. I'll go grab some and bring those down to you. Did somebody get them for you, or? Uh, you? No, that's okay. I'm Justine Trexis. I'm the executive director of Main Street Hanover, and I am here to give you an overview of our activities for the last year. Um, our annual report that I'll bring to you is for our fiscal year, which runs July to June. Um, but because of the way that you all operate, I'm giving you an overview of 2022 specifically. Um, so I don't know if, um, Mark, if you want to advance to the next slide, that'd be great. Any questions, if you could just hold those to the end and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Main Street Hanover is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and we operate and uh, own this nonprofit in our downtown to support the downtown. Our mission is to improve the economic capacity of the downtown, increase synergy, and enhance the quality of place. That's what we feel we do the best in. So we do that through a variety of activities, and those are the activities that I'm going to tell you about a little bit more tonight. So we can go next. Um, I see that our activities can really be broken down into four different categories. Our strategic initiatives, our outreach and support, which includes a lot of business interaction, our signature events, and then our advocacy. Next, please. Some of the strategic initiatives that I want to highlight here for you tonight are our beautification program. Um, we oversee the implementation of the hanging baskets throughout the downtown. We fundraise for that effort throughout the year. Um, we work closely with the Hanover Garden Club and we appreciate their support. And also we really appreciate the support of the Public Works Department for um, hanging, physically hanging those baskets for us and then helping us to maintain them. And then we manage the budget and oversee that project from start to finish. Um, the Hometown Heroes program, which we're so thrilled. I drove through town. I was in Chambersburg earlier today and saw that some of the banners are up. This will be our third round of banners, and we have 49 individuals that are being honored. Well, and I have to 
uh, amend that one banner you'll recognize as you drive around is honoring eight individuals, the Bennett brothers. So we're a little bit over 50 people that we honor every year, but this is a really incredible way that we can honor our military <coughs> communities here in Hanover. We have a number of military families that either are active duty or retired, and they reside in Hanover, and we are happy to honor them through this program. And lastly, tourism. We see a lot of the work that we do in partnership with the borough, in partnership with a lot of organizations, is to promote tourism here in the Hanover region, and for us specifically, the geography we cover of the borough of Hanover and downtown. Um, so the photo up there is from a series of videos that we created uh, in partnership with the borough, the Have It Made in Hanover series. We're excited to be moving forward with a few commercials that are being targeted throughout the Pennsylvania and Maryland region to promote tourism in the Hanover area. And those two tourism segments that we really focus on are foodies, eating out, dining out. We have a lot of really unique restaurants and breweries here in this community, a real niche market that we can fill. Um, and we also are targeting outdoor recreation, something that I can talk a little bit about here in a moment. Next slide, please, Mark. Our big feature and what we were so proud to accomplish last year was the launch of our Heart of Hanover Trails program. This is the new Civil War Trails program that we as a Main Street community are putting forth for individuals to to learn more about Hanover's participation in the Civil War um, and how it led up to the Battle of Gettysburg. Hanover was the battle the day before. Everyone made their way into Gettysburg, and it's a really important part of the Civil War <coughs> history and the history of this region. So we are honored to be a part of this program in connection with Civil War Trails, the National Civil War Organization, and we're really just thrilled to see where this can take us into 2023 as we promote this trail as an asset to our tourism, and we continue to find ways to promote it. Um, we have an opportunity in February to be featured in Civil War Magazine, on their live broadcast that they do every first Monday. So in 2023, that's really what we're going to look at as far as tourism is ways that we can continue to promote this incredible walking tour that we've created with local historians um, as a huge asset to the community. Next. Our outreach and support, some of the things that I really want to highlight here tonight is our Bloom Grant. This was an exciting first round of partnership with the Business Empowerment Center through the York County Economic Alliance. Um, with partnership and funding from their funders, we were able to um, award $18,000 in small business grants to, organize, to businesses in our um, downtown footprint, if you will, the downtown district um, within the borough. So this was grants ranging from new signage for folks, purchasing of equipments, upgrades to their businesses and its aesthetics, new paint, new carpeting. It really was a very tangible project that these businesses needed that extra grant support and able to accomplish and continue to make their business successful. So we were really thrilled. It was 12 businesses that were awarded a total of $18,000, and that's an investment <coughs> in the community in in these businesses that make up our downtown. Another project <coughs> that we're incredibly proud of that we organize and oversee is a facade grant program um, funded through the Department of Community and Economic Development. Um, and to date, uh, as we close out the program here in June, we will have seen $115,000 of total facade um, renovations um, that was leveraged from a $50,000 investment in this program from DCED. So what the facade grant program is, is a matching grant uh, in which individuals, businesses, or property owners can receive a matching grant for facade improvements that they make. Um, a max of $5,000 can be awarded per property, $10,000 for corner properties. So this is, again, something that Main Street Hanover oversees and runs that invests directly into the community. This is $115,000 of improvements that business owners have made, and they've been able to do more with the money they've already <laughs> set aside for these improvements because of a matching facade grant, which is incredibly exciting for us. 
Um, and then the last thing I just will point out is um, we continue to connect with the businesses in the downtown um, on a monthly basis. We connect with them and talk about different upcoming events, topics that are important to them, any new grant opportunities coming out. We talk about what's going on in their business, any kind of news that we should be hearing of. And it's really a nice touch point that we can make with these businesses um, monthly. Um, we also have a, a private Facebook group for any business that's located <coughs> in the downtown where we can continue to communicate um, between meetings, if you will. Next slide, if you would, Mark. Two things just to point out, we are now launching a ribbon cutting program. We're really excited to have held two of those in 2022. Um, for businesses that I think it's worth pointing out were existing outside of the downtown Hanover area and decided to locate in downtown Hanover, relocate their business, <coughs> decided that it was important for them to be here. They saw the opportunity here in this downtown. So Reading Medical and Bear Skin Care and Med Spa both uh, celebrated uh, opening of their downtown business this uh, past year. Next slide, please. Um, signature events is something that I, I do believe we're most known for, even though it, it makes up a, a only a fraction of what we do. It is the most outward facing thing that people are maybe will see most often. So just to highlight a few of the events that we did over 2022 year, our second Saturday program, where we encourage collaboration amongst the businesses to offer promotions and encourage foot traffic in the downtown. Our sip and stroll activities. Um, this past year, I think we had 16 businesses participating. And what that does is um, welcome 500 potential new customers into their store in the evening where we host this event and really gives businesses an opportunity to capture new customers and clients in a way that they would not have available to them had we not done a sip and stroll event. So we're really excited to see these continue to take place. I think it was our seventh or eighth um, year of doing sip and stroll and they continue to be incredibly popular events as well as revenue generators for our nonprofit. Um, our Brewery Olympics was a new event this year. I have another slide on that coming up. Chalk It Up is something we were excited to bring back this year, highlighting the arts community here in our downtown, bringing free and family-friendly activities into the downtown for borough residents, kind of regional residents, and also featuring artists, which was really exciting. And Spooky Spirits is our Halloween-themed uh, sip and stroll, so we were excited to do that again. One thing I'll mention is, Last year, when I spoke to you in January, I shared that we had 14 events throughout the 2021 year, um, which had roughly 4,800 people attending, as we could tell. Um, some of those numbers we can measure through ticketed events, others we have to really kind of guesstimate. And in 2022, we had eight signature events that we held, so almost half of those events, and we still had over 5,000 people we can estimate coming. So we have found that the trajectory of the events that we hold is continuing to increase because people are looking for things to be doing and our businesses are continuing to find value in them. Next slide. Um, Brewery Olympics was an exciting event. This last year we was the second year of this activity, and we were able to really um, kind of amp up what this event um, means to the community. Um, so we're, we wanted to kind of take a moment to just speak a little bit more about it. Um, Explore York invested in this event for the first time, um, meaning that they were able to cover the costs of brewing the beer, hosting the event itself, and then also created a lot of media buzz around the breweries that are located in our borough and give them a lot of that kind of buzz and excitement and advertising through doing a really interesting and unique event that brought people into the community. Bringing people in, creating foot traffic on the streets is something that always is a really good thing for our events. Um, and the winner, it's a competition type event, and so teams will compete in a variety of activities. The winning team wins the opportunity to brew a new beer. And this was this is incredibly exciting to watch because people who participate in the activity love craft beer. So um, I, we, I joke about the one photo on the left, they look lovingly at the beer they're brewing. It really is such an experience for the folks who win because they're making this beer start to finish with the professionals. And the beer gets to be launched and we have big parties about it, um, but it garnered a lot of media attention regionally. ABC 27 and Fox 43 both featured this event. Um, Explore York as the sponsor of the event was able to really highlight it in their social media. And we also had created some Have It Made Here videos highlighting and featuring, again, this niche market that we have, which is um, microbreweries. 
which is a huge draw for tourism. So it was a great way to acknowledge that here with this activity. Next, please, Mark. Advocacy. So this is maybe the last bucket that I'll talk about a little bit. Over the past year, we've been involved in a number of ways in which we can represent this downtown core um, regionally and nationally. So um, not only were we involved in some local projects like the Eisenhower Extension Project and advocacy for that, we also led some familiarization tours. Senator Phillips Hill took a nice walking tour with us and was able to meet a number of you. Um, we engaged with the Trail Town, the York County Trail Towns program, representing the Hanover area in those recreational and outdoor trails activities. And then we also partner with a number of organizations like the Cultural Alliance of York County, Pennsylvania Downtown Center, the York County Economic Alliance, and the Department of Community and Economic Development, all again telling that story of downtown Hanover and what the borough has to offer and why others should be investing in this community. So we really are honored to do that, and it was something that we are continually proud of to be able to represent this community in these organizations and be able to continue to tell what it is that we do here in this community. Next slide. And the one feature that I probably will never stop talking about was a big honor to win a townie award. Um, Pennsylvania Downtown Center honors a number of individuals and Main Street programs at their annual gala event, if you will. The awards are called townies. And this past year, uh, in June, we were awarded the Anchor Building for an excellence in Anchor Building um, to Jordan Elias and McAllister Redevelopment Project, and then Andrea Goodson for Volunteer of the Year. So this is incredibly exciting to be able to compete, if you will, with different projects and individuals that we like to honor um, across the Commonwealth. And we were chosen for excellence in these two areas of activities in which we were a part of. So. That's my little spotlight and a couple local awards. That's my presentation for this evening. Um, I share this with you all to um, kind of, again, give you a summary. I know that on the agenda here later, you'll be approving hopefully the ordinance to uh, continually fund our organization, to continue funding for this coming uh, year. Um, but I also would welcome you that if, if these activities really speak to you, if you are looking to get involved or if you have questions or um, other ideas in which you'd like to pursue or things that you have seen in other communities and want to bring to Main Street Hanover, I'd welcome you to reach out. We, I really enjoy hearing more about what other communities do and how we can continue to improve our downtown core. Any questions, comments um, before I wrap up? I was just curious, where are we with Bank Lane? Um, that's a very good question. Um, it not, it's not a good question. I just have not had a chance to be able to move that forward, I'll be honest. Um, for those who may not be familiar, the Wareheim Foundation provided a grant to Main Street Hanover to make some final improvements to Bank Lane. And a couple of the projects that are still outstanding in regards to that grant funding are the installation of some overhead lights to extend <coughs> fully to the alley. Um, also, the striping on the street to create um, kind of a demarcation of areas, one for outdoor dining and then one for cars. And then we also have some bollard installations that need to happen. My goal is for the summer to finally get that project finalized, um, but it has been slow going. So I'll be honest, it's not something that um, has been the easiest to do. Um, things have shifted as we continue to move through the project from when we presented you with that idea, that late 2021 till now, um, it just hasn't been able to move forward. So we still are committed to doing that. We're still thankful for the Wareheim Foundation for believing in that project and it still is on our to-do list. So, yeah. Thank you. Were you uh, having, running into any problems with the people that had the PNC bank building? We past? were not, we were not. Um, okay. at, the last really big interaction we had with them was their approval to hang the lights as far as we had in, in Bank Lane. But no, we had not run into any issues in moving that forward. Yeah. All right, Justine, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Congratulations on another great year. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Item 4B would be uh, Director Grimm. You may. Uh, I'm here to give an update on the traffic congestion, congestion and uh, pedestrian safety project for the square downtown. Uh, it was kind of fitting that Justine preceded me. Uh, she was part of this uh, planning uh, as well as many council members who were there at that time. It's been long talked about and debated throughout town, uh, but this really took traction 
with the formation of the old original Economic Development Committee and the Downtown Committee. So I know Dr. Rupp spent a lot of late nights there. Councillor Hegberg, when he was Citizen Hegberg, still uh, spent a lot of late evenings there, kind of piecing these things together. As some of our other projects were going at the same time, the adaptive traffic signals and the downtown streetscape improvement. So while we tried to move forward, uh, there were many things blocking our path as usual, especially when we have to deal with uh, PennDOT. But it helped us with these other active programs going on. Anytime we had a PennDOT engineer in town, I made sure they saw the square and how it worked, um, what our challenges were there. Two big things that council did to help move this project forward uh, that were very helpful uh, from those meetings, they decided to stay with the current design of the square. And then more recently, uh, council uh, approved a study through Traffic Resources Group um, out of York to do a study for us of the conditions of the square for traffic congestion and pedestrians. Uh, this was a big help for us in applying for an Arley grant. So the Arley grant is uh, presented by the state and it is money from the automated red light enforcement system in Philadelphia. Those monies then can be distributed for projects throughout the state, so not just Philadelphia. So my, uh, my update here is that our project has been approved for a grant. Uh, this was just announced two weeks ago, uh, and I'll read that announcement to you. Hanover Borough, $487,287 for downtown Route 94, 116, 194, traffic congestion, congestion and pedestrian safety improvements to include modernizing the intersections, to include APS pedestrian signals, three second advanced pedestrian phasing, flashing yellow arrow signals, 12 inch signals, and high visibility crosswalks at both intersections, a new controller cabinet assembly, and signal mass, single signal mast arm poles at center square intersection to accommodate flashing yellow arrow signals. Uh, out of that $487,287, the borough at this point, it looks like we're in for about 54,000, a little over that. Uh, there may be some other survey costs. So as we work through this, uh, the borough right now would pay for the engineering and design and mm -hmm. a few other ancillary items, uh, which, as I said, comes out to about 54000 uh, The as, as we work through this project, uh, TRG will come along and present, and you'll have a layout of what the project actually includes uh, with some visuals so that you can see. But basically, as we've talked about, it is to eliminate the ancillary crosswalks before you get to center square <clears throat> and those traffic signals. So everyone will cross in the center and the entire thing won't shut down when one person wants to cross the street. It will be like a typical intersection where the traffic and pedestrians can travel simultaneously parallel uh, with each other. Uh, this is this is a big thing and it was a big part on council to make those two decisions to invest in the study. The study was just over $9,000. That study just netted us almost half a million dollars. Uh, so it was a great thing and we're very happy to have this. We were the only recipient in York County and one of the largest recipients of this grant through the state. So this, I think this council eliminates the duplicate signals. Just so Correct. everybody's clear on that. Yes. I have a question. Is there a timeline, AJ? That's what I was going to ask. So we'll work through that as we get through the design phase. So, of course, the permit permitting phase when you go through PennDOT can stretch stretch things out, but we can at least see the light at the end of the tunnel now. So my question is related to the traffic signal uh, arms and poles. And, of course, tonight we're going to be discussing the, the planned streetscape and of course, you'll have the, light, the lighting and, and all the uh, aesthetics associated with that. Yes. I guess, depending on timing, is there an issue or would there be an issue if those poles got changed out to match the aesthetics associated with? We, we have included decorative poles. Okay. Uh, so as we said, because these projects were kind of working together, we tried to put as much of that in there as possible as we could. So we had that flexibility. Okay. Uh, so along with uh, moving to larger signal heads, uh, decorative poles for those mast arms will be included. Um, so, 
So the arms as they exist today are going to be replaced as well as the signal heads. Correct. And we well, can, I would assume the pole itself. Yes. Too. Right. The yes. whole thing would be replaced to an architectural. So we and we could, I believe, to Councillor Hegberg's point, we can paint them whatever color we choose. Well, when if you are designing them to come in, you would get them powder coated right. through that specific color, most okay. likely paint, black yeah. to match what's there now. <coughs> uh, vice versa. Uh, I just I was concerned of. You know, yes, exactly. We sort of go past each other on yep. this and not. Yes, we've been very cognizant of that. So, like I mentioned, Justine, uh, with uh, Eric Maines, our engineer, with all of these kind of big projects that we've had together, uh, we mentioned the Trail Towns, the DCNR, uh, uh, Green Space uh, Plan right now, Comprehensive Plan, Parks and Green Space Comprehensive Plan. We've tried to be cognizant to keep all these things intertwined and keep everybody on the same page moving together. It's a great thing to get free money, but it's a lot better if you can coordinate and get everybody together and not duplicate efforts. So. I think sometimes we do question whether or not we have to do studies for a variety of things. I think this certainly proves that sometimes studies bring money. So it's great. Thank you, AJ. Sure. Thank you. Just getting rid of half the stoplights or something, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you very much, Mr. Grimm. Okay, um, next finance, personnel, and administration, item A. Um, fire tax liens and exonerations. Um, how, do we, how do we go about that? Do we need a, we need a vote on that? To ratify the mayor's action to exonerate the tax collector from further collection of delinquent taxes that will be referred to the York County Tax Claim Bureau for a lien. May I have a motion? Same motion. You got, wait, you got a guy? Scott. Oh. I think Jim was... Oh, I'm sorry, Jim, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Hello, thank you. No, go right ahead. Um, uh, Put my glasses back this, on. I guess this is this is an annual a process that's done Correct. to uh, really consolidate the collection efforts for uh, the benefit of the, of the, uh, the, the borough, the school, and the county um, away from the tax collector, a, a more effective approach with the the liens that the York uh, County uh, Tax Bureau uh, will uh, perform to collect these taxes, and it's it's resulted overall our, uh, our uh, collection rate is in the high 90 percent, 95, 96 percent rate. So it's it, it is a valuable exercise and it's successful. So that's just a, a background. If anybody had any questions about what the, the process is for, that's it. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> with that, with the motion. Motion. Second. Yep. Second, Brian. Yep. Any discussion? Do we need a roll call vote on that or not? No. No. All right. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Motion carries. Five B. The ordinances for the 2023 uh, ap appropriations, Main Street Hanover, Justine, 40000 and the Hanover Economic Development Corporation, 15000 Motion Jim? approve. Second. Motion, second. Any comments, discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Item C, you missed out. We just approved your money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 5C, the library fundraising and development contractor approve the RFP. At this time, I'm asking council to uh, approve us to go out and, and start collecting RFPs from contractors uh, who are interested in fulfilling the the library fundraising and development uh, role at the library. Uh, previously, I came to council and requested a hire, uh, which council uh, tabled that motion. Um, in order to, to get the ball rolling on those efforts, I think our, our, our next action is to, to hire a contractor uh, who would do it for a set period of time, for a set amount. Uh, that amount, obviously, I don't have yet because that will be based on the results of the RFP. So at this time, I'm just requesting to get the RFPs. Uh, when the, those RFPs are reviewed, council will have the opportunity to uh, review and approve the contract at that time. 
Okay. We have a motion. So move. So move. Okay. Second. 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 Okay. Any further questions for Amy? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, item D. <clears throat> 333 Realty LLC versus, yeah, you want to talk about this, please? Sure. The, the next uh, agenda item involves litigation, uh, 333 Realty versus the Borough of Hanover and Tom and Rhonda Allison. What this is, is a quiet title action uh, filed by 333 uh, to quiet title to an unopened alleyway 10 feet wide and about 80 feet long which is behind the new Tree of Life uh, building. The adjoining property owners, that is the property on the other side of the alleyway, are the borough and Tom and Rhonda Allison. The borough's interest in this matter, since it's uh, not an opened alley or an alley the borough has ever maintained or ever used, is only to preserve the right of access to 229 Carlisle Street by way of the, by way of the alley. Um, so provided that we get that access to 229, the borough does not have a substantial interest in defending or, con um, or contesting the quiet title action. Um, so what you have before you tonight is to, number one, approve the proposed settlement agreement, and then second, to <coughs> approve uh, the substance of the proposed access easement agreement, which is perpetual. Any questions further for Attorney Schultz? A motion in motion. favor? I'll motion, Scott. Thank you. Uh, second? Fox seconded. Second, Chris. Okay, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, any further discussion? Does that require a roll call? Okay, those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Next is governance and policy. Um, item A, the public comment three minute time limitation. Thank you. Uh, I can give you a little background information on that. Yes. At our governance, governance uh, and policy committee, we discussed resolution 1296, which deals with decorum at public meetings uh, and deals with a variety of things, including uh, the three minute time limitation, which is in our current resolution 1296. Um, we thought it would be helpful. Um, we do. We do not. Our point is not to cut off any public comment. Our point is to limit it to concise, precise statements, so we can conduct our business meeting. So we're asking for approval of a purchase and implementa uh, uh, implementation of a timing system. And I don't recall the cost on that. Do you recall the cost, Margie? It was less than two hundred dollars. I think about yeah, about one sixty nine, something like mm -hmm. that. I think. How much yeah. is it, Margie? One hundred and seventy dollars. 170 some. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Where's that being purchased from? Uh, I don't, ha uh, there's several agencies that have them available for sale. We just found one and, and got an example to share. So we haven't decided. Yeah, I know we were from. talking about yeah. it was introduced to governess, mm -hmm. you know, so I didn't know that that was. I had a picture, remember? Yeah. It'll be nice to be able to help those that are speaking to see that and then they can, you know, bring their, their discussion to a conclusion a little bit more easily. And the chair, as Scott had said, get, has the opportunity to give that person a little more time if they need more time to finish up. So that's a time down. But Correct. you can, how much time is allowed on that? Um, whatever you want. Well, whatever you want. Whatever to you it. want. You yeah. could just program it. So if you were giving somebody five or ten minutes or yeah, whatever, you, you could do so. It. Mm -hmm. So yes, it wouldn't much. necessarily have chair. to be. Up to the chair. Thank you, Tim. So it's, cl it's clearly it's up, to, up the chair. to the chair to give them more time. Yes. If that's right. So it probably thing, starts though. at three minutes, counts down to zero, and then starts counting in negative minutes so you know how long I've seen them. But the chair has the option. Is that how the way it work. goes, Tim? Yeah. Yeah. But you can set it whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be five minutes, you can make it five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I move. So uh, move. Now, wait a minute here. I have some questions. We, we're, we're talking a three minute time limitation. Um, I attended, and I'm part of the governance committee, and I do have a problem with the limitation. 
I think that we've done very well so far because every one of these individuals have been able to come up and use the time that they wanted. And there are many times that they go back to sit down and somebody will come forward and they'll bring up another subject regarding that matter and all of a sudden it, uh, uh, it occurs to them that there was something more they wanted to add. Would they be allowed to get up again and speak or is that limitation going to be, and it depends on who the head of that particular committee or organization is that will allow, I mean, of our council that would allow them to speak in regards to the time period. I just felt three minutes is not an, I mean, if we're going to argue on limitation, I personally am not in favor of any limitation in regards to anybody that comes forward here to speak. Then you'd have but to if they ordinance. repeat, if they constantly are repeating something over and over again, I feel that it would be up to the head of council or whoever's in charge to say, we have run through that gauntlet and now you will be timed three minutes. I want that, I want that laxativity to be able to give our people time to present their opinions and what they're coming forth in. So I don't necessarily want to put a three minute limitation in there except to say that we do have the availability of a machine that will, you know, if we feel that we have 40 people out here, and we might be here. I don't care how long we're here. Okay, I don't care. But some have other plans and other responsibilities. So you hold a meeting at a reasonable time, and it's done timely. But I, I just feel that we shouldn't be putting that on our people at this time. I want to hear what they have to say. Three minutes to me is not long enough. If you were going to argue the point with me, I would have said, well, you know what? If you actually threw me up against a wall and said, you have to give me an idea of the time, which we spoke about in governance, I prefer the five minute. But before that, putting number one in front, I do not believe in time limits for the people. Uh, but if it is repetitive, then it is up to the head of council or whoever's holding that particular meeting, you know, to say, you know, now we're going to begin. And it's up to them, really, to decide, you know, if we have excess that we shouldn't have. But I just feel if we limit it to three minutes, we are really setting ourselves up for slow agony of death. Well, with our the the concerns are stated in the resolution that does say the chair can extend it more times and the person may get up again to speak about a different I topic. I would like it worded different, right. I, well, I then don't we'll want have to, to go back and change the ordinance time limitation. or change the resolution. I say you're going to have to change the, the, the ordinance. Darling, remember, this is an existing ordinance that it is an existing referring. resolution. I know, just I know. Sort of but we never, we never pushed it. We never pushed it. That was, that was what we did here at council. You never push people into a three minute. Well, there were minute. times when people were asked to make their comments a little well, bit more concise. Well, you know, I, I just think, can we word it different for it? Because this is what I was trying to say when we had our meeting. I, I want the people, they come first, and sure. we're here to hear them. And I don't want to use a definite limitation, but I do want it brought into play. And maybe this is the part that we should be doing. When we find something that's offending, I don't know how everybody out there feels, but to me, I'm not afraid to listen to them. And I know you're not. <coughs> you're not. I don't think the rest of us, uh, we're not no. afraid to listen right. to the people. But I want to be fair. And, and this is what it's all about. I think Scott uh, can we did change? A great job. Can we take this back to governess, table it, well, and come up with better is, wording? The, this Dr. is, this is, is the for the purchase of a piece of equipment. You can take the ordinance yeah. back and change it to governance if you want. But, but right now, our ordinance equipment. is three, three minutes. minutes. You're you, free John. to take it back to change it and bring it back to us. But this is just to order a piece of equipment. Right. This it's is actually not the time to talk right. about. We've never order. had it before. Okay. And so it, I'm saying this well, is going to be a It's just a, whole a piece of equipment that can be changed to three minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, 60 minutes. Motion on the floor. Right. 
Well, the only the thing motion. I want is right. the removal of that Darlene, three minutes. Please second. It was second. Yes. Yeah. It right. was second. All right. Those in favor? Aye. 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 And those opposed? I'm opposed. All right. So noted. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, moving on to the second item under governance and policy. Some time ago, we talked about having some junior council candidates, and uh, we were very fortunate to find two lovely uh, young women who are interested in being on our council as junior council candidates. Uh, we have Libby Houston and we have Thea yeah. Persaud. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Persaud. And we have your places here. If you, we want to, either information was in your packet about these young ladies and explain why they wanted to be on the council. And I think they have very good reasons as to why they want to be a member. And, um, and Marge and I met with them and told them we certainly want them to be an active member. They can't participate in executive council, but they can participate in our workshop meetings and in our regular meetings. And they're the future of our community, so hopefully they will give us some comments from time to time when things touch upon them. So I'm asking you to approve Libby and Thea as a junior council candidates. So. I'll show motion on that part. Yeah. Okay. And where are they? Right, right there. there. Right. You right. can't see right. them. Can't see them. Behind, behind, behind the right. pole. <laughs> I can't see them, so. Okay. They're going to um, move in a minute. Yeah. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank Can they Chris. go and take their seats? Congratulations. Sure. Welcome, Ladies girls. Seat. Please Welcome take your there. seats. Yeah. Do I need to swear them in? No. <laughs> you can do it in less than three minutes. Oh. <laughs> you know, you couldn't do a police officer in three. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that is a good question. We'll get a picture later, know. maybe for our newsletter. Yeah. That'd be great. That concludes my report. They're not they voting not members. Voting. Well, I counsel. Dr. Up, you finished? Thank I'm you. done. Yeah. All right. Um, next is uh, public works and facilities. Mr. Kress. Oh, I believe having Mr. Maines. Good evening. Um, so on the agenda tonight is the continuation of a discussion that we have been at uh, since I started here, so three <laughs> years ago now. Uh, when we started the conversation about uh, our facilities and unfortunately some of the lack of <coughs> investment we've made in those facilities and certainly understanding that we are in a newer world uh, that has different demands on us for all of our departments, whether it's public administration, public safety, public works, water resources, and all of those things. So your Public Works Facilities Committee has been busy working on that. Uh, they've been working through program studies, space analysis, feasibility studies, site assessment forms, all of these sorts of things. And we are to the point now where we need to take the next step, which is to begin to actually do our site planning. Uh, and so while we've really been focused on the buildings to date, now we need to shift gears a little bit and start looking at where those buildings might land and looking at how those sites might accommodate those and the challenges that might come along with that. That's important for us because as we're trying to build a solid understanding of what costs are involved with projects like this, you need to have the site planning piece in order to understand that. Uh, and so what I have done is I have gone out uh, and talked to several engineering and surveying firms. Uh, I have gotten scopes and proposals from all of them. Uh, I have reviewed them with the architect, uh, and I've dissected and chucked them up and gotten you what I feel to be the most cost effective for site planning for both sites. Uh, I took that to the Public Works and Facilities Committee meeting, the last one that they had, uh, and it was their recommendation uh, that we would move forward with the site planning and with the proposals that I had procured. Okay. I have a question um, on that proposal for the civil site planning. I, I, I looked over it. It yeah. was quite interesting. Okay. Very detailed. I enjoyed it. Yes. Some of the print was very tiny. Yes, that's the I'm consultants. I'm not getting any younger, but so anyhow. You do. Um, How you do the conditions? What? Nothing. It's the, it's the legal stuff it goes in small print. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right, Chuck. Yeah. Um, but the money that we're spending, it's like 120000 for the one and 70 some for the other. Okay. Yes. Is that coming out of our money at present and not being taken out of that 5.5 million that was given over to us as a grant. Does any of that go toward that type this of? This is part of your capital 
your capital spending, that money that you did tuck aside, this is part and parcel to that. But when we sat down and we talked about your budget for this year, we, we really came to the conclusion we're not ready to take on construction costs. We're, we're nowhere near that at this point. Uh, and so really 2023 for us is just the continuation of the efforts in, in this particular instance, site planning. We continue efforts on the architectural side, fixing up the, uh, the basis of design reports and things like that. All of that money is coming out of that capital building funding yes. that was okay. established, yes. All right, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Absolutely. I need that clarified. So moved. Second. Okay. Any, other, any other further comments or questions? Don't need a roll call, correct? No. All right, those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Kress. Thank Scott. you, Eric. I do, have, I do have one uh, request of Eric. Um, I, it helps me to see stuff like in reality. I was wondering if he could maybe set up a time that we go out there and view those places and sort of see where this absolutely. building's going to sit in yeah. that building. It helps me sort of understand. Yeah, oh, like a site tour. Yeah, like a little site tour. Mm -hmm. it's a good so idea. All I would ask in that is um, if you can kind of all decide who wants to go and what you want to see, I want to try and lump them together as opposed to 10 different trips out to the site. Um, but if you just let maybe Dory or myself know, you know, hey, I'm interested in looking at this site or that site, uh, I'll certainly make accommodations to get you there. Uh, and I agree. We I set dates and announce it and we can just follow up. I'm sorry? You can just set dates and announce it and we can just go with what you got. How about something like that? I can. That's a little less accommodating to you, and, and I certainly work for you. So I want to work around your schedule to make sure you can be there. I'm here every day, so okay. I'll, I'll go whenever you want to go. Well, we'll leave that between Mr. Cress and Mr. Maines to figure the details out in that. We'll go we'll from there. Yeah, that's a, that's a good suggestion, though. I agree. agree. Right. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you. And you'll bring this across on the website then. Yeah, yeah well, before we leave this topic, just real quick, one of the other things that, that the Public Works and Facilities uh, Committee hit on that we are going to be starting is uh, we need to start to become bringing the public into more of it now. So certainly before we're doing a lot of the technical end of things, looking at space, talking to staff and things like that. Now we need to start letting the public in to see all of that effort we've done, all of the work we've done with space management and looking at these studies and these feasibility, uh, as well as the site planning effort as it starts to get legs and move forward. Um, so I'm going to start working on some materials and things that will kind of help educate the public as to that whole journey we've been on for the last three years, uh, because I, I think a lot a lot of work has been accomplished, and I don't think all that work always sees the light of day. Uh, and so we need to, to see if we can fix that. And how do you plan to go about that? Uh, I haven't you figured have that ideas. out yet. I, I've got a number of ideas on how to do that. Uh, I think some of it certainly is sharing some of the, the many documents and studies we've done, uh, making them uh, easy to access, putting them in an organized way. I think also, you know, we may need to have something where maybe we open this building up and have some sort of an open house where we allow the public to come in, see those things, and maybe see for themselves some of the conditions and things that we're up against. And you'll have them available on the website, too. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. That, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to stay here because I'm up for 8A yeah. too. Okay. So. 8A, Enhancement Committee. I believe that's Mr. Hager. <coughs> it is, but I'll let Eric talk about it. We've Stop. got some guests here from the team. Uh, so Enhancement Committee uh, has been at work uh, since about the middle of last year when we put out a request for proposals to finally continue the work that had been started with the 2018 Simone Collins study. Uh, so if you're familiar with it, the, the 2018 Simone Collins study was when the borough last looked at your streetscape and really was having a lot of conversations, a lot of public engagement, design charrettes, workshops and things to understand what makes our our downtown streetscape, what makes it better? What makes it engaging? What makes it people want to be there uh, to either come and participate in things, to buy things to eat here, or to invest their business dollars in those things? Uh, and certainly to all the points Justine made about the work she's doing, that just goes part and parcel with this. So what we did back in about the middle of last year was we put a request for proposals out, um, and, and we got a number of proposals. We went all over the place. And ultimately, the committee narrowed it down to two. Uh, we brought them in just before the holidays and did shortlist interviews with them. Uh, and we really ran them through the gauntlet. We had a lot of preformed questions that we asked them. Uh, and at the end of that, um, one of the firms came out as being what the committee felt best represented what they wanted for the borough. 
best represented the sort of technical and creative resources to do what we thought the borough wanted to do. Uh, and as part of that, what I thought was an interesting piece was they also brought along with it that important piece of how do you pay for this? Uh, you know, it, it's great to have pretty pictures and concepts and things, but if they can't go anywhere and they can't be funded, they're not of much value to anyone. Uh, and so what this particular team brought forward with them was somebody who could help navigate that, help you understand what, how you go about funding those things, and not only that, but bring to it a history of having done that in other communities. And, and that was unique to their proposal to what we saw from some of the other ones. Uh, and so I asked them to be here tonight. So uh, I'm not going to give you the hour presentation, but we do have uh, Dewberry here uh, with us in the audience uh, to give you just kind of an introduction of their team uh, and certainly answer any questions you may have. And I will turn it over to them at this point. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. I'm uh, John Holmes with Dewberry Engineers. I'm, uh, as we talked to our interviews, I'm a local guy. I live in Spring Grove School District. Don't hold that against me, but I was a high school graduate there and wrestled with Hanover often and that sort of thing. But anyway, so we're pleased to have this project. Um, we, uh, in our proposal, we laid out what we're going to do, uh, study what was done in the past, have some public outreach, get some more input, come up with a uh, a general some concept plans on how to approach it uh, look at funding alternatives that's where we have delta development involved they've done a fair amount of that i've actually worked with them in the past uh, one project was up in uh, on slimeware avenue in gettysburg so we're familiar with these types of projects uh, one of the key features that we talked about was uh, green stormwater infrastructure to address stormwater when we're doing these streetscapes dewberry's done a lot of those uh, a lot of them in the northeast uh, including some of the big cities as well as some smaller communities so we feel like we're uniquely suited to this so we have uh, with today's technology we can draw some key uh, personnel from outside the area to bring some expertise for us but I'll be the local guy uh, heading up the project and I have with me Darren Asper <coughs> from Delta Develop you want to add to that Delta? Yeah uh, Darren Asper with Delta Development Group I've been with Delta for 27 years um, not quite as local as John, but I'm from Boiling Springs, so that's not too far away. I'm excited to be down here to work on this project. Uh, our specialty is, in addition to the planning work, uh, really looking at the projects as they come forward and how do you fund them. We have an unprecedented opportunity at the state and federal level in terms of funding. And uh, we can give a realistic sense in terms of how you phase out projects in terms of funding to put all the pieces together um, in terms of a funding strategy. I was really glad to hear tonight um, all the success you've had with funding um, between the RLA grant and, and so many other exciting things have happened. We'd like to help you build on that um, in terms of implementa implementation of a plan that uh, will move Hanover forward in the next 10 years. So we're excited about that. Any questions from us, for us? I think this is huge. I think we're making some forward movement with this. And not only are we doing this, we also, listen, this is a downtown Hanover. We're actually moving forward with it. And not only are we moving forward with it, we have funding in the line, in the strategy to make it happen. So Got ideas and I money believe, at the same time. Yes, that's progress. <laughs> Was not a hallucination. Now, Brian, that's a very astute point. Thank you. Should add, I'm very familiar with downtown Hanover, having done the Dutch Festival for many years. When you drive into town at five o'clock in the morning, say, "Why am I doing this again this year?" And it's a lot of fun getting the vendors in place, and then shoot them out of town so we can reopen the streets so we don't get in trouble with with Penn Out. Are you one of the vendors? No, I was with the chamber. Ah, got it. I was Sorry. one of the volunteers. Yeah. It's a long day. It is a long day. Okay. Any. Uh, questions about this Chuck you want to add anything more to that no I'm looking forward to get it going we got okay. stalled a little bit with the holidays but yeah. so um, you're looking for and you're making a motion to move it yep move it your to motion I motion it I'll Sorry. second Ryan's a second any discussion further those in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed aye. thank you Chris motion carries the gentleman thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank excited you. to have you thank you very much <clears throat>
So I'll take B uh, here. Item B? Yeah. So <clears throat> citizen advisories to the Enhancement Committee, as uh, many of you know, uh, with all our different committees, um, we're trying to make some changes here. This would be the first committee with citizen advisors. We'll have three, um, similar to Barb and, and the young ladies joining us on the council. We're sort of trying to reach out a little bit more here. So with that, the, the Enhancement Committee um, would like to approve the appointment of Brian Johnson. He's also on the Planning Commission. Uh, Austin Graham, who's on the Planning Commission, and Isaac Reston, who's here this evening. Second. I'll second your motion. Okay. Any questions or discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. All right. Motion carries. There you go, Isaac. Thank you. Gentlemen, you want to stand? The <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to working with you. All right. We'll work him. Yeah. Okay. Number nine, public safety. Comes with fun. Hmm. That belong to Chris. Okay. Um, public safety. Uh, at our last meeting, we discussed and came up with a draft of. Uh, of a contractor log form that uh, basically the gist of it is any contractors that we have working on our facilities, particularly off hours or facilities like, uh, you know, waterworks or the sewer plant, that type of thing, that they have a special form they fill out so we don't just have, you know, anybody can come up and say that they're a contractor and get in and possibly for nefarious reasons, do something that they shouldn't do. So anyhow, we uh, we came up with a form that nails that down so that we don't have issues. And um, <clears throat> the other thing we discussed was uh, the proposed changes to the special events ordinances, which had pretty much dealt with um, the uh, brew fest. The brew fest, they want to make that... Uh, and a priority, yeah, Snack Town Brew Fest. They want to make that an annual priority special event. Um, so that's uh, really all the safety committee discussed. Okay, so then item 9A, the amendment of the special event ordinance. Okay. Chris, you make a motion in favor of that? And yeah, Tim, your motion. second? Yep. Okay, uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Item 9B, rental, rental, excuse me, registration and inspection workshop. Um, approve the formation of a workshop between council members and citizens. I have a motion to approve that. I say a motion. All right, and a second. Is there a need for it? Yeah. Mr. Becker even said. What? Mr. Becker is questioning the need for it. Do we even need it? Yeah, I was. I was very. Um, you be, you believe we need it? No, I asked them if they needed it. I understand, but said, now he's saying we don't. Yeah, apparently. Okay, well, so we have a motion, and it needs a second. Well, it's not going to get a second. I think I've been that. here before. What? All right. Second. Go. No second. All right. It's fine. Um, what do you say to that? Motion fails. Motion, motion fails for lack of a second. Yeah. Thank you. How about a, mo how about a motion to move the original intent forward? Original okay. ordinance forward. Can we add that? Can we add that? It's not well. It's not on the agenda. That's yeah. It has to be. Okay. Have to be then I'll that. save it. Next time. You can add to the next meeting agenda. Can not? What? I'm talking, I mean, there's I'm no need for the workshop. No. No, we've eliminated the workshop. No, I'm just saying, Chuck's suggestion, you could add to the next agenda. Am I correct? Would I be allowed to speak? It's okay. I'm not trying to say that. Public comment. When public comment. I'm just asking, because you've indicated something that's not exactly correct, I would like to follow up on that. Well, you did, too, in saying that our meetings are not open to the public, and They're they not. are. And that's the problem. That was not the intent. What Mr. Redding and I proposed not was a workshop not that was open to the public. What you're doing is a, we move is on a to the next secret meeting. Let's, 
No, it's not. Let's let's just let's stay on this. So that that's dead for now. Do we have a for lack of a no, second? No, no, no. Do we have a um, an idea going here where we wanted the workshop, but the workshop was done but by the people. No, let me finish, Scott. Brief. And it was it was done by the people Be brief, because. Please. They, they were not in favor of the IPMC and the things that went with it. And what the workshop was done, it was open to the public. It was open to the public. We cannot always have, let me put it this way. There was a demand for a code enforcement officer to be present. That code enforcement officer works his tail off day in and day out. And he cannot be at the meetings. The idea was to find out from you, renters and landlords, about the problems that you were facing. One was registration and fees. We were going to address it to its ultimate. Both tenants, private ownership, people who own their own homes, and for the landlords. This is where I was with it. I asked you what you wanted, okay? You want to defeat it. You want to come back out with something different. That's fine. I just wanted you to know that you had the chance to be heard. This was not a lockdown. This was never a lockdown workshop. But we could go back to the code enforcer. And any questions that we had from a particular meeting, we could introduce and place with him, and he would give us the information we needed to bring to our next meeting. Okay, so what, what has to happen now? I, I don't know, Scott. I mean, well, I'm no, absolutely it's, it's been, astounded. It's been, right, but it's, it, it, it dies for lack of a second. Procedurally, then, if this wants to be dealt with yet again, it can go back to, uh, where does it belong in um, public safety, pardon me, and the next public safety meeting is um, February 7th. February 7th. So uh, those that would like to participate in the, an enhanced version of this discussion can be at the public safety meeting on February 7th, and we'll expound upon this. Would and you like that? Put a plan behind it and whatever you want to do. Okay. And that way it's with a committee. All right. That is correct. It has to be brought forward. I think what Ms. Funk is trying to say, guys, is there wasn't an outline for this. To me, this, just, uh, this okay. what we were going to do. It was for so everyone. We're going to take this back to the public safety meeting. To list correct, that it be. correct. And it's February 7th is the okay. next one. Yeah, I've got it. At uh, 6 p.m. Yeah. in this yeah. room. Yeah. Okay. See you there. So the, if, if I could go forward then. Uh, Item 10, the committee chair reports. Scott, hold on a second. I just want to say something as the chair of public safety. Um, what we want to do is we want to have all the players at that meeting so we can hash out what we're going to do, you know, including the renters, the landlords, and, you know, basically that's that pretty well is the two main players. And, uh, you know, like I said, we'll get... Uh, We'll get our staff involved when we come away from that meeting with with some direction that we're going to go in. So I definitely want you know, you know people on both sides of the issue, and we can hash it out at that point. So that's uh, so we we can do it all in one meeting. Hopefully. All right. Thank you. So that falls under Mr. Lockard's Public Safety okay. Committee. So um, Mr. Lockard already gave his committee chair a report. Uh, Chuck, do you have anything to add, Mr. Hegberg, for enhancement? No, we just we did it. Okay. Uh, water and sewer. Uh, Tim or Chuck, can you cover for Bill there? Anything to add? No meeting. No, no business. Okay. Um, Mr. Kress, Public Works and Facilities. Yeah, I got one thing. If I could, I'd like to have everybody's attention. Okay. As Mr. Maines sends out information about where we are with the either a new facility or what we're working on please now is the time to stress any of your concerns questions or issues that you might have okay he's going to put some information out to you fairly soon and now would be the time 
I believe he did a good job of talking with uh, Councilman Rupp, Dr. Rupp, and I think he answered a lot of her questions, and we want to continue that path. So as you see this stuff, don't just double-click that email. Please take a couple minutes and, and read it. Okay, so now's the time to make any of your everybody's concerns on the council and or comments known to Mr. Kress or Mr. Maines. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Dr. Rupp, governance and policy. I would just thank uh, Councilman Kress for his comment because his plans were worked on for like three years and it's been a long series of meetings with this plan. So I agree, take a look at it because it's some, it's been a long time together. coming. Uh, governance and policy committee, I think we continue to look at our policies and our resolutions and I'm sure with Margie as our new borough manager, maybe some things she wants to bring to our attention. So we'll just keep plugging away. That'd be it. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, Mr. Lockard, would you like to comment on the fi uh, fire commission? Okay. Yeah. Um, at this point, um, things are moving along fairly smooth. Uh, we have uh, hired, uh, hired a, a lady to replace our one administrative assistant, Vanessa Larson, who resigned, uh, from her position in back in December and, uh, have a meeting tomorrow night out at, I believe it's at Penn Township this month. So um, that's at 5.30 tomorrow evening. So that's really all I have on the commission. Thank you very much. Um, management reports. Uh, Margie, do we have anything we want to put in there? No, that's, I don't believe there is. That's a placeholder, is. we're good? Nope. Uh, any correspondence and information? There is some correspondence. Yeah. How do we want to handle this? I just asked if anyone had any comments on correspondence and information. Okay. Does anyone have any co co questions or comments on <clears throat> the correspondence uh, in the package or any other that they're aware of? Okay. I'll take that as a no. Additional public comment. Uh, we'll start with those in the room. If anyone else would like to add something to the, based on the, the comments of this meeting. Appreciate you guys taking the time to hold the meeting, of course, to allow us to come here. Um, I do just want to take a quick moment to say that. Can you, would you tell your name? And of course, uh, our parks, start drive. Um, nothing personal. I don't like fully doxing myself. Uh, I do normally don't come out to these meetings. Um, I feel over half of the room came out for a very specific reason this evening, and the fact that only one person on the council deigned to even think about it kind of shows us where you sit and where we lie as far as our workshop and where we, we as a people sit with that. So I just want to go ahead and urge you guys to think about that for the future. And on February 7th, it's not the 6th, uh, is the meeting that I'm sure we'll all be attending and going forward with that. Yeah, it was the 6th, or excuse me, the 7th. The 7th, yeah, it was previously stated as the 6th. At, yep, I just wanted to make sure that we had that proper. 7th. Yes, so the it seven is the 7th at 7th and 6th, yeah. And it's held in this room. Correct. I just wanted to make sure that, one, that was also addended because it was originally stated as the 6th at, at 6, and I did not want anyone to miss that meeting. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments from the room? Anyone online? I want to last thing, oh, Martha, sorry, go ahead. you might recall that uh, we had a large group of people here several times over the last few months. They cannot show up at every single meeting. We cannot keep that group together to come meeting after meeting, month after month. So you can't expect them to be here, but we will remind them that there is a meeting in February and we will be present and ready to participate again as a group. So thank you for that. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, Anyone online would like to comment? Would you, gentlemen, take care of that, please? If you're joining us online, you're able to unmute yourself if you'd like to address council. I guess that, take that as a no. 
Okay, well, that I've, brings us any on, further I've comment. I've got a question from some of the people in my ward on concerns with a traffic study at the at the intersection of Ma Middle Mountain Ridge. If anybody has any information on that, do we have one that had happened down there? We did do one there. Okay. Um, They're asking about it, and I just wanted I to. I guess the chief. Address it here today. Yeah. Oh no, he's back there. Yeah. I can't see him either. Because didn't we do one way back, like about three years ago? Yeah. yeah. I don't have it with me. We That's did. fine. The yeah. determination yeah. was there was no need for. Okay. I do remember that for any type of a light or anything different than what's there. That's what they wanted to hear, and I told them I would address it here today. So. Here we are. Okay. Any other counselor comments? With that, uh, I do have a, a question, just as a reminder, placeholder, that in our uh, financial document, we removed the, the borough's goals and objectives for 2023. And we're going to be into February already, so I think we need to figure out what that is going forward. Okay, very good point. So we'll take that for the next the, the uh, next month's version of this. We'll have that discussion and agree on it. I certainly don't see any major changes, but Chuck, your point's very valid that it should be in there. We haven't said any. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, Brings us to item 14, adjournment. Can I have a motion for adjournment? Second. All right, second. So we stand adjourned at uh, 829.